Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be showing you the top 10 most nostalgic art tames so without further ado let's get straight into it. In at number 10 I have got the Thyla and the reason why I'm putting this creature here is I just think it is such a useful one and it really did shake up the space of arc when this thing released as obviously it didn't come out with the base game in 2015 it was still in early access of course and it was for a while but this was a healthy inclusion to the game and people really did love this creature when it came out and they still really love it now it has definitely stood the test of time and people have a lot of nostalgia with this creature for obvious reasons one, it has been in the game for quite a while now, so there's been a lot of time to use these creatures, and they're so useful and great anyway. Everyone remembers when they were introduced into the game, as it really did shake up everything, especially in boss fights at the time, because they were allowed in then. Obviously, then they did have to be banned for their wall climbing abilities, but still, you know, that was a really nice time in the past. And with these creatures still being great to this day, and people having great memories with this creature it really does make sense why it is on this list and obviously why i've put it on this list they also do the bleed ability as well they are great combat creatures truly truly amazing tames they can climb any kind of wall or vertical surface they are fantastic i'm so glad wildcard added them to the game and they really did shake up the island a little bit continuing on we have got the therizinosaurus and no it's not because it said it was unlocked at level 69 nice Great inclusion, but that is not the only reason why I put it on this, but definitely, you know, at heart, it's still a fact term, all right? Either way, these creatures, I'm pretty sure, were in the game reasonably early on. I don't think they were out uh, when it released, but I'm not actually quite sure with the time of these creatures. I've just remembered for a while, I have loved these creatures as general gatherers. Yes, you can use them for the dragon boss fight. They're great for that. But I love their ability to gather fiber. And at the time, I'm not sure where the moss chops was in the grand scheme of things. I didn't really use any of those things. I remember just killing those things for hide. I didn't really use them. The only time I have used them is for organic polymer from Kairuku. So that's the only use I've got out of the moss chops. Doesn't have enough nostalgia for me, of course, to be on the list. But the Therry was my go-to fiber gatherer. And also, it's a pretty good berry gatherer as well. And calling it the Chickle Chicken was something which really does make this thing a lot more memorable if the creature has got a funny nickname it is just going to become a lot more memorable and sort of a lot kinder to people as well and kinder in their minds and this really does fulfill that it's a great creature which is capable of loads of gathering and that is why it's so respected in me and that is why i find it to be a really nostalgic arc tame so the ut is a prime boss creature but actually, when it first released, I know it's a bit of a later one, which is why I'm kind of putting it back. I think I'm pretty sure it was a 2017 or 2018 creature, something around that. Pretty confident it is 2017 though, rather than 2018. I remember it coming out around the time Aberration, Aberration, sorry, was released. And I really like these things as a general carnivore. Obviously, I did use them in boss fights for their courage raw. That was just a really nice thing to have. But I loved using them just as the essence of a carnivore because they were fast, agile, mobile, and they did a lot of damage. Their health is quite decent, and their stamina isn't the worst thing in the world. Yes, at least Spino was a kind of sort of better carnivore in my eyes, but I found this to be better just for land travel. I don't really know the particular reasons why I decided it, but I just liked it so much and i still love it to this day you might just say well spino can do everything and spino could pretty much do everything in terms of travel that the ut could do probably even better but for me the fact that it was so useful in bosses even though it was a late creature this did make quite a massive difference considering the stage of the game it came out to me and that is why i put it on this list and it's still far back enough that the nostalgia is definitely there with this thing okay, at number seven we have got the rex and i find that the come on with the rex it is just such a well-known dinosaur it's probably one of the most popular dinosaurs in the earth or on the world even uh, probably even the most popular everyone that knows what a dinosaur is will know what a t-rex is probably a stego and a triceratops as well and it really does stand to that in arc the rex has a lot of nostalgia they have obviously gone through a model change since release but they've been in the game 
right since the beginning. They have been that team that people tend to look up to in the early days of ARK. Now they're not really looked up to a lot actually, which is a bit of a shame because there are a lot of other creatures which are just completely changed the space of ARK. ARK is a very different game now to what it was in 2015. Yes, for the better, but in some ways I might say for the worse as well, but that is what ARK 2 is trying to amend and ASA tried for a little bit, but then kind of failed because you've got to keep it how it is nowadays. The world's moved on and in my opinion, it's moved on to a sort of a better place. But obviously the nostalgia factor is going to make everything in the past pretty much seem better than what you're dealing with now because it gets rid of all the bad stuff and then you've got all the the good times that you had and at the time you probably didn't know that there would be nostalgic moments but they definitely were but yeah this creature king of boss fights really is a valuable time to have in any given boss fighting scenario and general attack in combating scenario as long as uh, there's not too much mobility involved as it does really struggle with that. Talking about the Spino, which obviously I did in the previous two, I think, UT Rhinos is when I was talking about this thing. Either way, the Spino does hold a strong place in my heart for a nostalgic tame. These were kind of what I sought after even more than the Rex. I don't know if that was just me, but I thought the Spino as a bigger, more powerful creature, they didn't have as much health as the Rex and they still don't, but they have a heck of a lot more mobility. Back then they didn't have the hydration buff and they couldn't stand up on their hind legs, but I still love these things to death and use them in boss fights. Hugely, I used it actually a bit more than the Rex, I would say in my opinion. I do use Rexes more now, but mainly I do actually use the Deinonychus, which is not on the list because it's not quite old enough for that nostalgia factor, so I am definitely sticking to the older bunch for this list, of course. Like, come on, you've got to stick to those pro probably pre-extinction creatures, I'm going to say. All of these creatures are uh, aberration, aberration, sorry, or sooner. In fact, probably even sooner than that, really. The UT's a sort of outlier. But obviously, now they have a TLC. They've been updated further. The Spino is really a great, neat little creature to have to ride around on and to take anywhere. If any of your mobility needs, they're great in the water, great on the land. Sadly, they can't do any kind of crazy acrobatics and things that you get some of the new creatures to do. But they really don't need that. At heart, they are still that very mobile carnivore that we all know and love. And they've been around for so long. The nostalgia is definitely there with a creature like this and I really, really do enjoy using this thing still to this day. They have definitely stood the test of time and are very much a nostalgic art team. Then at number 5 we have got the Stegosaurus and I'm putting this creature here as the Stego was my first kind of like adventurous tame you could say in a way or like maybe difficult tame. It took about 2 hours to tame one of these things up. I think it was like a level 1 or level 2. It was a, uh, yeah it was really... It was a very exciting moment, we'll say, in my ARC career. Obviously, no kind of career actually came from it at that point, but now it is sort of a it's sort of a career, but not really. Either way, going back, it took two hours to tame this thing. Was my most impressive tame at the time, and um, I'm pretty sure I got that Stego killed by some raptors or a Carno or something like that, which uh. Yeah, wasn't the fondest thing that's ever happened to me, but you know, Ark is Ark, and you know, Ark is going to keep being Ark in those ways. Obviously, again, like the Spino, these things are now the TLC, and it makes them even more nostalgic in a way because now they've been added to more and it makes them feel like they're in the modern age while still being that nostalgic art creature. I know a lot of you will probably be saying like where's the parasol, the triceratops, I'll give them a brief honourable mention here at the number 5 spot because they do deserve to be here in some aspect, just not for me but I know loads of people like the parasaurs and all of that, they are like peak nostalgia and actually there'll be one honourable mention further on in the list which is actually going to be right at the end of the list and it's going to be a sneaky number zero but i'll let you wait for that and you'll figure out what it is now the baryonyx obviously wasn't in arc when it released but i'm pretty sure it was a similar period uh, to the thyla when the redwood spine released and obviously the swamp spine released and then we got ourselves the baryonyx i'm pretty sure that's how the chronology chronology worked sorry i couldn't 
Get that out of my mouth for some reason. Don't know why that was such a difficult word to say. Either way, the Baronet was the king of caving. Previously, we'd used Sabres. Another great honourable mention there if you were thinking of that creature. But yes, after this thing came out, the Barry was the king. And it still kind of really is the king. Yes, you can use Shadow Mage and things like that. But obviously, that's going to make it on the list. It's too recent of a tame. But still, very good for caving. Either way, the Barry was the king of caving at the time. And as far as I'm concerned, it still pretty much is top of its league. It is very mobile. It is the right size to fit into pretty much any cave that you could think of. And they are fast, agile swimmers, meaning the underwater caves were very easy to do as well. They can stun creatures up to the size of a Megalodon as well with that tail ability. Just truly a nice thing to have. But yes, the fact that they could cave really effectively and was kind of something new and novel really did make them stand out to me. And I still use these things to this day. And they really were great creatures for me. And I still love them so much. And they really are something of what makes my art playing my art playing. In number three, we have got the Carnotaurus. Maybe an unpopular opinion, as you might be saying. Well, the Aloe is just so much more nostalgic. Did come a little bit later on. But, you know, your opinion is your opinion. For me, the Carno is that creature where I'm like, it is just the one, okay? The Carnotaurus has been just through everything with me, through every single map that I've played, pretty much, actually, basically, or pretty, actually, I'm just going to say all of them downright, unless the Kano didn't spawn on the map. I have had myself a Kano, and I have prized that Kano. I've been naming them Meatball the whole time as well. I did name them Carny Dave a little bit because of Squid's Arc series, but then I, I named them Meatball after that, which is kind of what Carnotaurus means from Latin translated into English. It's a bit of a a rough translation but it's it's pretty much that or it's like meat lizard or flesh lizard or flesh bull something something along those lines either way Carnotaurus a very nice creature which has also undergone TLC you'll find a lot of these creatures actually have apart from the next one on the list actually but you'll find out where that is when it's that time but yet yeah, now they have the bleed ability which they didn't have before and obviously that comes with a second headbutt attack and that's pretty much all the TLC I had as far as they had as far as I'm concerned which really does make them even better creatures that I find they are quite fast agile carnivores for their size maybe so the aloe is more fast and more agile fair point and you could say that they're a better creature and fair point on that too but for the nostalgia factor for me this always tops the aloe and I'll pretty much always go for a carno over an aloe for the nostalgia factor and I just really like using them and I find myself to be quite good and useful and effective when using them and I'll continue to use them and for that they have to be on the list for me. In at number two we have got the Giga and when the Giga released which is still 2015 it really did make quite a big difference. So did the Quetzal in the same year as well. Another honourable mention which I could have put into this list, but it didn't make as big of a difference to me as the Giga, and I'm sure many of you would agree with that. While the Quetzal was cool and you could still level movement speed and you could build a base on the back of the thing, this was the biggest carnival we'd seen it yet, and we thought nothing really could get bigger. Well, the Titanosaur came out afterwards, but, you know, we didn't know that was happening, and it was just so OP and so, so cool to tame. You don't even care what the level is. You just got one, you went out there, you found one, you got one maybe named it tiny tim if you watch the squid video on it you know if you know you know that is actually probably one of my most re-watched art videos the nostalgia in that thing truly truly great video if i do remember i might put a card up on screen and link it there but if not maybe go search for it just look up i realistic squid uh, arc giga and you'll find it. it's like episode 50 of the original arc series on that honestly basically the best video that youtube has ever seen in my opinion in terms of the nostalgia content but yeah they really had a new perspective they dealt so much damage and their rage ability was something which was seen as quite cool and in a way a little bit scary and coming in at number one we have got the argentavis and this really does top the nostalgia list for me it is just such a nice creature to use it is very ergonomic it was designed with a lot of thought put into it and for that i really do love it as a creature it also has seen a tlc since it's been released as well kind of weird to think that the giga 
hasn't, at least as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't still got that atrocious stamina and all of those things with it. But I guess the car credit to Soros is the sort of TLC of the Giga, if you will. But yes, this has seen a TLC. Well, I'm pretty sure that added all of the weight reduction stuff, something along those lines. At least I'm pretty sure, confident that it added the saddle as a smithy if it didn't have that already because I think the Castoroides was the first creature to do it and then it adopted it and that regen buff was definitely not present. Actually, they might have had the um, the weight reduction stuff back then. Either way, I did use these things for a lot of metal farming because although the Tyranodon, another honourable mention you could put on this list as well, was a great creature, I didn't find them really to be very nice to use at the time. Like I was like, yes, first flight and that is really a big achievement in arc but the RG just felt like the next step and the thing that was really memorable for me and once I got one I never stopped using one and to this day still use them. Again not really sure with the chronology of whenever the TLC came out but to this day I still really use them and love all their abilities. You can even carry an extra creature in their mouth which I'm confident they didn't have before the TLC. Just honestly great great creatures. And in at number zero I've decided to put the dodo because does anything get better than the dodo? It's probably the first creature you'll see in Ark. Maybe unless the Dilo's there, but you know, the Dilo's not the creature you remember. The creature you remember is the dodo. This little cute thing that runs around on the beaches. It is the pinnacle of Ark. The Ark logo and the Ark wallpaper should all just have the dodo at the forefront. And you've got the dodo rexes and the dodo wyverns, but nothing stands in comparison to the great original dodo. And that is why obviously it deserves to be king of this list 100 percent the top 10 at best arc resource gatherers so in at number 10 we have got the Ashatina. if you didn't know this is a really great passive way to get yourself cementing face sort of like how the basosaurus is a way of getting passive oil quite easily and i do find yes you know that could be an honorable mention for this list, although I have not got it included here. I just find this isn't the hardest thing to tame, just some sweet vegetable cake will get it done. And the fact that you can get loads of cement phase through this is really useful, especially if you're on a server, because I'll be running all the time you're offline. Really, really amazing thing. So is the dung beetles as well, actually. So the shadow main is something, uh, or just some creature that you may not consider to be a great resource gatherer, but in my opinion, it really can do quite a bit in terms of hide and meat gathering. It is a very nice carnivore to use, extremely mobile. You can get around with ease, and it's actually quite a good creature for gathering some fish meat as well. It can be very easily done as it is a tremendous swimmer, and you do find that with a lot of carnivores. I was considering putting maybe like the Carcodonsaurus or the Rex on here or the Spino or a creature like that But I find that these creatures do it better because they are more mobile I'm not sure if the meat gathering rate is different and actually a lot higher on those But I just find it's easier to get it done with those still really powerful small creatures as they can just get everything done more effectively and efficiently in my eyes it really does just work well for me and that is why i simply have to put these creatures on the list as i really do love them for all of the gathering which they do for me and i actually think they deserve a little bit more detention i mean attention in the resource gathering community because they definitely can do quite a bit which you might not expect them to do the castoroides is up next and also the megaloceros as the male megaloceros as a short honorable mention as it is a really great stats gatherer and i really do uh, commend it for that i just haven't put it on this list because i thought it would kind of go nicely with this creature which is the castoroides of course i've already said that and this is your go-to wood gatherer and obviously wood and wood and thatch go hand in hand one is a very useful resource for any kind of structure guns weaponry and one is just uh naked zombos absolute favorite resource and with the castoroides being so good at getting wood they really do deserve to be on the list yes obviously i think it's like the chainsaw i think it's called that at least in the game my mind is failing me at this time of day or night i should really say but yes 
that is a very good way of getting wood but the castoroides is also a splendid way too it is relatively quick and agile and get around too and actually in the early game it can be a reasonably good way to get silica poles as they're not the worst swimmers out there and they can get away for some dangers and on top of that actually they can pack some bite and punch as well definitely don't underestimate them in damage department although maybe you originally would in number seven we have got the stegosaurus and it's just one of those creatures where you do have to respect it for its berry gathering it is one of those creatures where it's like it is just, it does its job effectively. You can say the Bronto is a very good suggestion as well, but the Stegosaur, the OG, the Trike, and the Parasaur is also some uh, good suggestions on top of that as well. But I find out of all of the uh, creatures on the list, the Stego kind of deserves the most credit as I find it can gather a lot of berries reasonably quickly, especially considering its size. Yes, maybe not quite to the volume of the Bronto, but it comes with a little bit more ease of use and also general versatility as well. I know they're not aspects which are on the list today, but still I thought I would factor that in as they are just generally just nicer creatures to use on the whole also they're a little bit more inconspicuous as well so if you don't have cryobods yet you can tuck them away more easily and that's more useful obviously for pvp servers but for pve as well you might just not have the space to facilitate something like a bronto at least not easily yes you can leave them outside but you risk them getting killed by some other dinos and obviously they're great tanks as well for given pvp scenarios and it is just actually pretty good at gathering wood as well. I think with the uh, heavy plate, something like that. Uh, either the heavy plate or the hardened plate. It'll probably be the heavy plate because the hardened plate's ones, uh, the one used for turret soaking. But yeah, that one's actually pretty good for gathering wood as well. The Dionicus, in my opinion, is sort of the upgrade to that meat and hide gathering thing and that is why i've decided to put it here uh, generally i do prefer them as creatures they have the bleed ability as well uh, the shadow main doesn't as far as i'm concerned yes they don't have the hydration buffs they're not going to be as good as gathering all kinds of fish but still they can kill big and large creatures really really quickly they can simply grapple onto them like that you can even just bring one out you don't really need more than that for all of your regional scattering needs quickly turn to shreds and get all of that meat and hide you're going to have no issues whatsoever pretty great at gathering some chitin as well keratin is going to be easy too and actually that does remind me if you're wondering about the uh, megatherium i'm going to give that a brief honorable mention as that is a really great chitin gatherer for its insect uh, buff where essentially if it kills an insect it will rage and you can just get loads of damage out of it but generally go into a cave with pretty much any creature that is powerful enough to defeat everything with all of those bugs you're going to have a lot of chitin out of it anyway but the megatherium really is going to farm tons and tons and tons especially if you're in the insect cave and there's another creature which is actually further on the list which could be useful in that scenario as well but we'll get onto it slightly later on in the list but yeah the Dynonychus, a great meat and hide chitin keratin gatherer. It takes no fall damage, really is an extremely mobile creature and very much deserving of this spot on the list. In number five is the Therry and I'll give the Moss Chopped a little bit of credit as well, although the Therry started was unlocked at level 69. Either way, this creature is, in my opinion, the best fiber gatherer out there. Whereas the Moss Chops is also a really great one and really great for organic polymer as well. And I do really attribute it for that. And it is a great gathering tame. It's just, you know, there are so many creatures to really get through. And these are the ones that I've thought of first and uh, resonate most with me. But if you do feel as if I've missed any creatures, I probably have acknowledged them in some way or maybe at least tried to in this video and even if I've completely missed them blatantly I'm sure I still care and leave a comment down below with what your favourite gatherer is or gatherers which you think that I may have missed as I always do want to know what and maybe I can add to these videos into the future to maybe just make them better and in some ways more personalized to you as well while still keeping the opinions valid to me as well yes i know there's a lot of pvp players that watch my content but do just take into mind that i'm a very pve centered channel so most of your pvp stuff while interesting to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense overall i'm really like 
like not knowledgeable at all when it comes to any of that stuff and yes they're all very nice and useful tactics but i'm just surely uh surely i just i just don't really i don't really use them as much as maybe i should thinking of that creature that i was uh, talking about before with that insane uh, gathering of not chitin but with caves and insects you're gonna get yourself a heck of a lot of cement space with this thing much faster and much quicker than the ashtina obviously and also sorry about that part ramble on about the theory there when i talked about uh, other stuff i went a bit off topic i'll promise not to do that later on and also just throughout the rest of this video but yes this is the best cement space gatherer out there in my opinion beaver dams exist but nothing does really compare to a creature like this it is fast agile very mobile and if you get a good level it has enough health and damage to withstand some caves especially even the insect cave if you just take your time a little bit you can get yourself tons and tons tens of thousands of chitin in fact the real difficulty is just getting all of that chitin out of the inventory of this thing and out of the cave because you'll be slot capped and overweight and all of that stuff as well that's not the best situation to find yourself in but they can just gather so much chitin that's simply what they do and also they can gather some fish pretty effectively as well they are great swimmers and you can do a little bit of combat with them so some hide and meat wouldn't be the hardest thing out there to get but mainly these things are the best for chitin gathering which is useful in so many crafting recipes in number three i've decided to put the mantis as i find it is a really versatile creature yes maybe you don't think of it as a really great gatherer for all of uh or just specific resources but the thing is this thing can gather just so many things anything that you can physically gather with a given melee weapon that being meat hide chitin keratin wood thatch stone flint metal obsidian crystal rare mushrooms rare flowers fiber uh, and all of that stuff you can gather with this creature with absolute ease you just simply need to equip that weapon and you can get quite a lot of it pretty quickly the only difficulty is sometimes the mantis can be a little bit of a pain to tame and uh, especially if you yagger it in some cases it's not the easiest or most friendliest thing to come to but once you've got one especially if you've got a high level one you're really going to enjoy these things and their versatility in resource gathering which is why i think they really do deserve the spot on the list again i named just so many resources and there are even more as well that these creatures can gather pretty much again any feasible resource that you can gather with any given melee weapon out there on uh, a creature or just actually that you can equip tech weapons i'm pretty sure do not work on this thing and also just to bear in mind the durability of the weapons will drop a lot more on the mantis compared to any or it's compared to when it's on you so do you know the weapons might break a little bit faster than you expect at number two we have got the desmodus and this is just for actually maybe two simple reasons they are really great at fun blood bags and one of my favorite art creatures out there is the blood stalker and also the desmodus as well and that is very useful for taming blood stalkers and the desmodus as well and they can give you a little bit of a nice healing boost as well although the medical brews will work a lot better and i'm pretty sure there is a timer on how fast you can consume blood bags as well so not the best but you still can use them in a pinch but the main thing about this is the fact that they have sang on elixir which is an absolute cheat for tames the fact that you can craft it with the resources that it gathers obviously being blood bags it's also great meat and hide gatherer kite and carrot and all the things that you can gather for animals it's going to do perfectly as well but that sang on elixir 30 percent of that tame is done with a click of a button no issues whatsoever it really is a golden star creature when it comes to its resource gathering i really feel as if it deserves to be in the number two spot it is just so so good and that resource is just so so useful to have especially for me as a pve player that does a heck of a lot of taming but anyway in at number one is the anki and also the dodig as well that's just a side thing they really both do fit into the number one spot for me they are just such good gatherers but the anki is the main one as without metal really what are you going to do in arc i know you can gather metal without the anki the mantis can gather metal really well but the anki gathers it a lot better you can get crystal and obsidian a lot better this essentially acts as the pick upgraded i hear some people going around just like oh why isn't there a better pick after the metal pick this is essentially that and then if you want a better hatchet 
then get the dodic and it will do all of that for you these two creatures are the best resource gatherers in the game it is going to do everything that you need it to do or everything that you need a pick or a hatchet to do but just on another level and if you pair them with an rg as well if you've got some cryopods too then you can carry them around very easily but then boom like that get loads of metal stone thatch not and wood and obsidian and crystal and all of those resources and then carry them all back in the rg and probably not even be encumbered whatsoever it is just such a great resource gathering strategy and i really do advise it no mining drill or whatever is going to compare to the sheer amount of gathering that you can get out of a creature like this but anyway that is in today's video i really hope that you've enjoyed also sorry that i forgot the text strider if that is something that you're going to mention I gave it a brief mention in the outro. Either way, comment down below what your favourite art resource gatherer is. And if you didn't agree with this, put your turn in the comments below. I'll see you later.